Time vortex is here. Tony spinning. Hey, hey, hey! It's time for another Mexicon! <laughs> I'm Casey Coughlin, uh, and my host... Michael Gaines. <laughs> <laughs> Hola, everybody! Hola, como estas? Muy bien, y tú? Uh, muy bien, donde esta cuarto de baño? I don't have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> How you doing? Haven't talked to you since yesterday. I know, it's, oh, it's been so long. I know. Do all these shows... Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, really. Mm-hmm. So the opening, uh, if you're, well, it's not on the video. We're, we're working on that now that I have a new computer. But the opening was uh, Matt Smith and Karen Gillan doing the opening to <laughs> Doctor Who, which was hilarious. I laughed my ass off. So I said, all right, I'll try to put that in today for the opener. Yes. They're very cute together. They, they are. They are. They they were ducking below the camera level, and then as they got louder and louder, they just sort of like raised up, stood up <laughs> in camera range. Oh, it was funny. So if you are if you want to find it, just do a, a Doctor Who cast sings theme or something like that on YouTube. It was very there cool. Go. Very, very cool. Should we get to the news? Indeed we shall. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, you know... That was a remix. <laughs> that was a remix. No, that all right. So I'm I'm going to show this on the video. I'm using uh I'm using a soundboard on uh, on the iPad, and I didn't realize that it didn't stop playing the theme. <laughs> it was still playing it with the with the volume uh, all the way down. So, er, derp. Okay, so what do we got? Well, uh, coming up this October. Yes, October eleventh. Uh, well, on your shirt, what do we have? October. Oh, this is last year's, but yeah, I'm oh, wearing my okay. Comic Con shirt from last year. Uh, the New York Comic Con has revealed a poster that uh, was commissioned to show off the new redesigns for the Marvel Now campaign. Mm-hmm. Marvel is doing what DC did with the New Fifty Two mm-hmm. and uh, revamping all their major titles. So I don't have a problem with this. I think it's fine, except for what the hell is the Hulk wearing? I know. That was my first reaction. Like, everybody else just looks like the movie edition. And they did this with the X-Men. When the X-Men first movie came out, um, you know, they brought out, um, was it not the new X-Men, but Ultimate, the Ultimate series, Mm -hmm. which, you know, didn't revamp the whole uh, whole franchise, but it was just kind of like another book and in, in like kind of a what if fashion. Sure. And and that just went parallel to the normal story, you know, world and everything stayed the same. And then they had this parallel universe where everything started over and they did things differently. Mm-hmm. But everybody looked like they did in the movie, you know, with their black uh, leather uh, uniforms and everything like that. So this poster kind of like it makes all the Avengers look like they did in the movie where there's a little bit more armor a little bit more padding and and leather yeah <laughs> except for the hulk the hulk's got this is, this this like plate mail thing stone i don't know what it is bizarre the whole what? point of the hulk is that he doesn't need armor why did they put armor on the hulk oh well, they go into a little bit more detail in the article where it says that sure the hulk doesn't need armor but bruce banner does so i guess this is some <laughs> sort of magical armor that that shrinks and compresses and expands you know when he when he grows so that <laughs> shrinkage but okay so if that's true then when he's bruce banner he's wearing this weirdo like halter top armor thing with you know nothing underneath then yeah. he's gonna look like a total weirdo and it's like there's random just pieces of metal like 
metal islands, you know, all over his body that aren't really connected in any way. It's very, very strange. Yeah, I, uh, I can go on, but I won't. But uh, we'll we'll see what happens. I'm I'm gonna be at New York Comic Con, so I'll take a look and see what happens. We'll report back on it. But I'm just not digging the Hulk. The, uh, the Hawkman. Uh, Hawkman. <laughs> I'm Nobody getting my gets- universes confused. <laughs> I grew up in DC. It's it's very hard to sort of unlearn some things. Um, now Captain America looks fine, and uh. yeah, yeah, the others look fine. It's just Hulk went I don't know to a gay bar and, and came out with <laughs> some accessories. <laughs> okay, The Hobbit, as we know, was going to be turned into three parts. We now have a title and a release date. Now, here's the thing. When I read an article about the, the third part of The Hobbit coming out uh, in July of 2014. And I thought that was very strange because it's been December, December, and then December for, for the other ones. Yeah, this one's yeah. coming out in July, July 18th, 2014. It's called The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smog. And uh, S-M-A-U-G. Yeah, not yeah. smog like Los Angeles. Smog. Smog. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it it's uh, it's going to be a big year, big three years for the Hobbit. Two, well, two years technically, but uh, yep, the three years, 2012. It's coming out this December. I forgot. I got it so close. 12, and then the second one is 14, 13. Oh, 13. Okay, and then 14 for part three. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Because so, they probably filled them um, well, somewhat together. mm Hmm. Like they did with Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. And, well, well this... Uh, no, wait a minute. Now, hold on. There's another article that's... Okay, the another second... Article. No, 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 no. The second... Okay, wait. This article is confusing. It's saying that... <laughs> you know, let me, let, me, let me just divert for a second. In the last two weeks, I have seen people that have written very poor titles. Like I reported something today based on um, a title in an article that I read today that Lady oh Gaga's gosh, never Lady Gaga's new CD was going to be re- or new album was going to be released on iOS only, mm-hmm. and it turns out that the person who wrote the article wrote it wrong, and completely left out the fact that Lady Gaga actually said it is coming out on CD and said that and, and this person who wrote the article said that it's only coming out on iOS. Well, totally that wrong. never happens. Bloggers are always one hundred percent correct. <laughs> You know, it's getting to the point now where I almost have to stop reading. You know what? It, you know what? I I've you been, just can't believe anybody anymore. This is crazy. No, I have been finding that the entire internet is turning into an entire game of, of telephone. You ever, ever play that game when you were a kid? Yes. Right. Well, that's been like that for a long time. Where, you know, with, especially with rumor sites and and tech news sites, somebody reports something, and then a billion other sites report the same thing, and some of them source it back to the original. <laughs> some, you know, maybe not. And right. it, it's been like that for a while. Desolation of Smog is the second movie. Third one is The Hobbit. There and back again. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, please. All right. What's with all the new Kindles? So Kindle had a very um, Apple-like keynote today yes. in Santa Monica. <laughs> you want to talk very, about who's stealing from who? Very Apple-y. Well, I mean, if you're going to copy somebody, who better than really <laughs> the masters of the presentation? Sure. Um, but yeah, so Amazon announced three new Kindles today. Mm-hmm. Um, a new traditional like Kindle called the Kindle Paperwhite, which is a lot like uh, the previous Kindle Touch, where it's got that e-ink screen, mm-hmm. uh, no matte black and white, no buttons or anything, so it's all touch, but it's a much better, higher res, clearer e-ink screen. I think it's 212 DPI, mm-hmm. uh, so it's not quite retina. Obviously, it's still e-ink. Um, and that's going for 119 or 189 for a 3G model. Okay. Um, and then they also released the Kindle Fire Second Edition, mm-hmm. which is an upgraded version, pretty much of the Kindle Fire we have out now. Uh, same size and everything, with upgraded specs, more memory, but you know, faster processor, yada yada. Uh, that's 159. Mm-hmm. And then we have the new Kindle Fire HD. Oh. So it's a very similar size to the regular Kindle Fire, but it's a 16 by 9 ratio, making it a lot slimmer. Mm-hmm. Uh, where the other Kindle Fire was 
not quite a four by three ratio, but kind of that weird in between like the iPad is. Um, upgraded specs again, and that's going for one ninety nine. One ninety nine is huge. Oh, th- oh now that's a, is that the small one? There were th- um, yeah, when he was holding them up, the smaller one was the HD. The HD, okay, because there's um there's a thirty two. What the reason why I say this is because I was I was taking a look at it earlier today. There's a thirty two gigabyte version that they were comparing to the iPad, and the thirty two gigabyte Kindle Fire HD seven inch is going to be two forty nine. And they're comparing oh, yeah. that to the. I think the 199 is the the entry level one, and then you can get upgraded memory. Yeah. Uh, uh, so there's um, it was on the verge. Let me let me actually go there. The um, the specs that they were comparing against the iPad, they're saying, well, the iPad is 750 dollars, and this one is 250 dollars, and and the iPad is far more expensive. Well, it's it's also. The Kindle Fire is far more limited as well in yes. in its capabilities. You're not going to be doing photo editing or video editing or you know a lot of the the stuff you can do on an iPad on the Kindle Fire. Yeah. It's great for consumption and kind of what the people were saying with the iPad One. Um, it's a great consumption device. Mm-hmm. You know, you have access to Amazon's bookstore, their music store. Uh, video, um, you know, it's great for all of that. Maybe yeah. some games, um, but still very limited kind of inner. You know, look at the the main screen, the interface. It's it's that kind of like bookshelf interface. So mm-hmm. obviously, if right away you're like, well, this is this is not for doing everything, no. but. Um, you know, at that price point, I mean, it's, it's obviously appealing to some people. Sure. I, I just don't think that it's fair for Amazon to compare themselves to the iPad 3 when you can, like you said, the iPad 3 can do so much more than well, the Kindle uh, HD. So they're going to compare themselves. <clears throat> they want to be a tablet, mm-hmm. even though it's it's a, I mean, they're probably closer to an e-reader, um, but they want it to be a tablet. I mean, and and I guess in in all fairness, it really is. It's just a limited function tablet. But you know, it's got a browser and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, but obviously, they're never gonna compare themselves to an e-reader because yeah. you know e-readers have kind of that stigma, and they don't want to. I don't think they'd want to be grouped. I mean, they have you know the paper white. That's your e-reader. If that's your deal, great, buy that. Mm-hmm. But the fires, these are tablets and these are awesome and whatever sure. you know so they're gonna they're gonna compare themselves to who's dominating the market right now in that category and who is that yeah it's apple um i posted on twitter today i said don't be fooled by the price um in that respect i was saying uh, they, they were saying in the keynote that they want to make their money off of people that use the device. They don't want to make the money off of people that buy the device, meaning they, they don't want people to pay more up front. But what's hidden in that statement is that, yeah, they're still going to make that want, money. Right. They want to, people to pay more uh, for apps and content. And mm-hmm. and that's really where everything's going. You know, things, it used to be all the money was in the OS mm-hmm. with Windows. And then it shifted to all the money was in hardware. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that was Apple. And now it's kind of shifting again to where all the money is in apps and content. Yep, I so, agree. So, you know, you give the device away and you make all the money on filling that device with mm-hmm. things. The uh, There is one important thing about this about this announcement is that they said that the uh, the Kindle Fire HD is going to have 4G LTE. And this is the interesting part, is that it's going to be $50 for a year for 250 megabytes a month. Now, yeah, people I like, don't know who they're going through for that. I, I haven't. Read. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I couldn't find anything that said me that. Me neither. I don't think, I mean, they're obviously, they don't have their own, you know, <laughs> provider. They're not their own broadband network but um yeah in light of you know with AT&T and Verizon doing these all in one family inclusive bullshit plans mm-hmm. um that's pretty surprising 
It's surprising also because if they compare themselves to Apple again in the same chart, they said mm-hmm. that uh, Apple. I looked it up. I think it's fourteen ninety nine a month for AT and T uh, for two hundred fifty megabytes a month. Now, if you're a user like you and me, two hundred fifty megabytes is nothing. I mean, we can yeah. probably eat no, that up in a day or a week. Tier. Well, that's the lowest data plan for any uh, device. And it's almost always the data plan that they try to steer you away from. That mm-hmm. you generally, like, nobody's going to really get that. And they, they have it so that they can say, like, plan starting from 10 bucks or 20 bucks or whatever. Oh, yeah. you know, so, they, so they can have that low starting price point. But nobody really gets that. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the crappy plan that would really work out for, like, your 90-year-old grandma and maybe nobody else. I just wonder, because they announced all this before the September 12th announcement for the iPhone 5 and, and, the, and the upcoming announcement for the, uh, the smaller iPad mini, is whether or not Apple is going to go to whomever this was that is giving them the, the $50 a year for GLTE and say, we want that. And well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it's AT&T and, they have that, and Apple has that longstanding relationship with AT&T, why not go to them and say, look, we want this number two? course with these new rumors of apple reworking um airplay into a like internet or data free spec that can just share over the air somehow mm-hmm. i don't know how it's doing it without needing an internet connection i could see apple more going the route of actually being their own broadband provider not Ooh, needing anybody interesting very very interesting so We'll talk about that more maybe on the Infinite Loop show. We'll, we'll see what happens over the next couple of weeks. But, yeah, we're going to have the uh, the big show about the September 12th announcement on Wednesday night. Yes, yes, next week. That's right. All right, what's with RIM? What are they doing? Oh, they are not winning any races <laughs> at all. Also, you know, trying to put content on their devices and failing miserably. Um They've resorted to offer uh, $10,000 to developers for making BlackBerry 10 apps. Wow, $10,000. Now, are these companies, the, the, the article say if it's companies or individuals? Um, it, didn't, it didn't specify who. They just said they're willing to literally pay developers to write apps for it. And remember, we heard this from Microsoft for the Windows Phone platform, too, you know, a while back when it seemed like that was kind of struggling and everybody's like, ah, oh, well, you know, it doesn't have enough apps, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Um, Blackberry's never had apps, and now they're trying to kind of, like, come up from behind, and I don't see how... Yeah. I mean, the Apple App Store and Google Play Store now are just so far ahead and mm-hmm. so entrenched. I don't see how anybody can compete. I mean, the Microsoft mar- uh, Windows Phone Marketplace ha- has a chance, mm-hmm. you know, and it's it's a valid, you know, third option. I don't see how BlackBerry is going to be a valid fourth option. I, I don't either. My sister, I, I might have said this on InfoLoop before, but uh, my sister works for a big company here. Um, she just went from a BlackBerry, which her company stood by for many years, to iPhones. And so if if that big company is um, is moving over to uh, to iPhones, I can't see how how other companies aren't doing the same thing. I just don't see yeah. RIM surviving for much longer. It it built itself on the fact that it was the enterprise solution, mm-hmm. and they've lost that recently. So, yep. good luck, Rim. Well, this is why I say uh, companies got to innovate. I think they became complacent with their yes. with their spot in in enterprise and said, "Well, we're enterprise. Nobody's ever going to touch us." And along comes Until Apple and bitch slaps them. Until our network goes down, you know, oh, in succession many times, then right. everyone jumps ship. Mm-hmm. I forgot about that. Yeah, that was huge that day. That was what two mm-hmm. years ago, three years ago. No, it was um, less than a year ago because it was when I was in my current company. Oh, okay, and I remember when that we ha- were dealing with that. Okay, all right. Um, but yeah, hey, guess who else is trying to um, <laughs> kind of rebrand themselves? Oh, good luck with this. Who? 
Yeah, it's G4, our buddies. <laughs> um, the network has apparently decided to focus less on gaming and geekiness and more on the modern male. Oh, and, and we were talking about this before we started recording. I thought that maybe they're trying to be more like Spike TV, but the, uh, you said that the article said they're trying to be more like GQ. Yeah, not the idiot male, but the <laughs> suave, well-dressed male. I tell you, I, I just don't understand G4. It's uh, Anybody no. who's a tech TV fan just goes, yeah, hates G4. Comcast. Yeah, no, exactly. So you've got that group who, you know, lived and, and knew of that whole battle and and we picked our sides right mm -hmm. and then you have the people who either didn't know about that or didn't care and are just like mindless <laughs> gamers and watch this network but now yeah they're even losing that small base that they had i don't i don't know why i, I still they're think losing money and they're just floundering for solutions yeah the only person that i I, I haven't watched G4, but the person that I still follow f uh, from there on Twitter is uh, Sessler. Because mm. I still think X-Play was a great show. And I know it's still on, but I, I, my, my, my principles just make me refuse to <laughs> watch G4 ever again. I know, me too. That's, that's totally how I am. And Sessler, like, I, I could never... I love Morgan Webb. Mm -hmm. Sessler is so annoying to me. Ah, he's funny. I like he's him. Annoying. I but, know. Um, Ice Worm in chat um, brings up a good point. You know, they've even, and not very recently, like end of 2005, dropped a lot of their gaming-focused shows. So to focus less on gaming, like they're not even focusing that much on gaming now, and they're supposedly a gaming network. So it's... Yeah, I guess this was an inevitable decision since they've kind of been changing over wow. for the last, I don't know, seven years. I can't see the chat room. Damn, Ustream is busted. Oh, well. Casey and oh, I are in two different chat that. rooms. What? He says Sessler is gone from G4 now as well. Is he? Oh, well. Oh, I didn't see that. Darn. Oh, oh well. Hmm. And last on the news, I put this in because it's it's just one of those silly things. <laughs> During and really translates well to audio, I think. No, for audio <laughs> no, I want to tell people about it because <laughs> I want them to look it up. Under the cannot you have be work now, listeners. <laughs> I'm sorry. Real life Bert and Ernie cosplay at Dragon Con. These are the most. Oh my god, they're they're terrible. They're frightening. They're they're horrific. Yeah, they're very horrific. I can't tell if they're wearing like some horrible done makeup or they actually just have the worst skin problem ever. <laughs> and the hair. The hair cracks me up. All right, yeah. let's move on to the quest log. Look, I got it working this time. Oh, you're such a big boy. I am. So, once again, uh, Casey and I have been playing Guild Wars 2. We had a very long Labor Day weekend, oh. so yes, lots of time to devote to the game of games. What level are you up to now? I'm 44? I think I hit I think. 53 yesterday, or I'm about to, or I'm halfway through 52. The reason why I'm so high is because crafting gives you so much damn XP, and I, I collect all this stuff, and then when I get to the next level, I just sit there and I craft a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. And when you craft an item in Guild Wars 2, your experience goes up like, I don't know, like 1% or something like that. So you're doing well, a string of 100 if things. You discovery, it does. If you're crafting just out of like your recipes... It it doesn't jump that high. Well, it, the discovery really kicks it into full gear. Th well, that that is true. But like for example, I'll I'll have like in storage, I'll have 180 or 200 uh, scraps of cotton, mm -hmm. and then I'll 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 take them all in my inventory and I'll go to the crafting station and I'll say, okay, craft all these things. And my my experience level went up like about 20 percent on 200, um, uh, 200 uh, uh, scraps of of wool. I would think after okay. like 100, that thing would go gray and you wouldn't get any. Did you read, did we talk about this last week about the guy who got um, 1 to 60 normally and then went from 60 to 80 doing crafting? 
Uh, no. Yeah, there was an article where the, the first person who got to 80 in Guild Wars 2 did the last 20 levels doing crafting. And one of the developers from Guild Wars 2 said that was not supposed to happen. <laughs> because you get Stop so it. much Stop XP. Right yeah, you get so much XP from crafting that this guy was able to just sit there at a crafting station and go from 60 to 80. So, That's insane. And two days ago, I whispered you one day, I said I got three levels just from crafting, just from sitting there for an oh, hour. I just, didn't even see that. Yeah, crafting over and over again, I got three levels for in an hour, just making stuff. I Well, I haven't like sat down and crafted that much at any point. I mean, I've gotten up to like... 120 something in artificing and and pretty high in mm -hmm. cooking um but usually like it's not for an hour straight it's in little pieces usually i run out of mats in like 10 minutes and so then i'm back to adventuring and yeah you know harvesting what i've been finding is that originally what you can do with the game is like uh, similar to disenchanting and wow is you can take an item uh regardless of what level uh, blue, green, whatever. And you can use what's called a salvage kit and turn it into its base components. And what I was doing is I was using that for everything. Mm -hmm. What I didn't realize... Well, I mean, I sort of realized it, but um, I, I, I guess because I was out adventuring, is that the, the items that I was, um, I was salvaging is actually worth more on, uh, from a vendor than they are from, di from um, uh, salvaging it and then putting it up on the auction house. And so yeah. what I've been doing instead is I've just been taking all the blues and greens and selling them, regardless of what they are. So I've been selling a lot of... Well, now that the auction house is actually up, or the trading post, I'm sorry, is actually <laughs> up, I've just literally been selling everything I can while the feeding frenzy is going on, because I know right now people are going to be starved for stuff to mm -hmm. buy, and so I want to get in on that, and then, you know, I'll... I'll do my crafting later. I'll just make my millions now and buy all the <laughs> minis I can. There is one thing that there's another thing I found about the trading post is that there are some items that sell for a good amount of money, and then there's item there's some items that sell for a, a copper higher than what you can sell for at a vendor. Yeah, so no, what, not everything is is good to sell. Yeah, right. But I uh, I made my first gold and I was so happy. But I've been spending all my uh, all my time. Uh, crafting what I have and I'm finally out of stuff so now I have to go out and uh, and do it so we wanted to talk a little bit about well first we've got some news well these are a couple of points that I thought were really interesting mm -hmm. from just a you know and for I mean these would be interesting if, if it was any game uh, point of view mm -hmm. um, Guild Wars 2 hit 400,000 concurrent users just in the pre-launch weekend mm-hmm that's so this lot. is early access. The game hasn't even officially launched, and they hit about half of what WoW's, you know, users is roughly now after mm -hmm. like how many like seven years? That's yep. crazy. That's higher than Swotor, which had way bigger hype than Guild Wars Two. <laughs> you know, that's higher than than any other game I can think of right now. Um, yeah. That's huge numbers. And that's pre-launch. Like, that's even that's a, a even bigger deal because the game hadn't even launched and it, and it hit those numbers. Mm -hmm. um, but, and then because it <laughs> hit those numbers, um, it looks like they, on their website, actually had to suspend first-party sales of the game until their current user load could be handled. And if you're playing the game, then you kind of know why mm -hmm. uh, you know a lot of things are being worked on still a lot of things are still kind of down or up or uh, you know down or up intermittently and down most of the time um like the trading post <laughs> but you know one thing i've always almost experienced on every other game but never on this one is the login queue you oh, know yeah our server's full and so i guess people can't make new characters on it but when I go to log in the game, I've never hit that queue where it says, you know, well, it's too full. You got to wait, you know, 10 minutes like WoW does. Or I've seen that in EQ2, um, you know, a few times, but never in this one. So maybe this was a good idea so that the current user base actually has a fairly good experience without yeah. throwing more, you know, Tinder on the fire. Mm -hmm. I read an article that said that Guild Wars 2 hit the top 
uh, sales spot in Europe, but they mm. didn't count digital sales. So, oh. so digital we don't know exactly how many copies sold overall. We don't know how many copies were given away for free by GameStop <laughs> and other vendors. Apparently, that was um, quite the. Um, I guess if you bought a digital copy at any third party vendor, that was uh, quite the um, debacle that a lot of people were getting two copies. What happened with me was I had paid for my original copy of Guild Wars Collector's Edition. And, and I have the receipt. I have the original receipt still. It's, it's actually right here. And it says, I will read it to show you. Guild Wars, here, Guild Wars 2, Collector's Edition, pre-order, reserve pickup, blah, blah, blah. I go to pick up the game and the guy says, oh, you have a regular edition also? And I went, no. And I look at the receipt. And there is nothing here. It just says Guild Wars 2 CE and Surprise! nothing else. Surprise! Guild Wars 2 is buy one, get one free. So I, I, I didn't argue. <laughs> I just said, okay, uh, if you say that I have another copy, then I have another copy. And he says, well, it looks like you put down a 40 some odd dollar or 50 some odd dollar deposit on it. So uh, you have to pay us a difference of $10. I'm like, okay. So I did. And. It's over behind me, and I, I just took the number and uh, gave it to our friend Eric. And so now Eric is playing Guild Wars 2 with us. Uh, I have a feeling that without all the hype that uh, Star Wars Old Republic has, that I would, I would bet money that feels like Guild Wars 2 sold more than a million copies, maybe a million and a half worldwide. Yeah, with digital copies for sure. Yeah. Um, oh, I want to say I read somewhere that it did just in pre-orders alone. Um, that the the number of pre-orders to get into like the beta and everything mm -hmm. that it was around a million. Okay. Um, I'm not sure where I saw that, but I'm pretty sure that that was the case. So even before, again, even before launch, you know, during betas, just the pre-orders alone were in those in that range. And then who knows, you know, right at launch or just after mm -hmm. what you know their overall sales were. So. Oh, we were talking a little bit about exactly what to do if we're talking about Guild Wars 2 as far as like giving people tips and such like that. We're not going to do our own show. It, it don't have the time. Casey doesn't have the time. I don't have the time. We're not doing our own show. It's a very important person. Just can't. <laughs> well, you have a job and I have a job. And I guess maybe if this was my job, Imagine then that. I would do it. But what? Yes. Imagine that. We have jobs. <laughs> we have Crazy. jobs. Uh I guess, what would you say would be the most important thing for somebody to make money in the game? I would think it would be to just sell everything you have. Yeah, yeah, but uh, but I mean, more specifically, if it's more important to sell like the gear you find or crafting components, mm -hmm. which I think at this time right now, um, there's enough higher level people that crafting I think kind of comes more into play um, so I would think crafting components would make you more money at this at this point mm -hmm. it would uh, I found that maybe not tier one but the tier two crafting components start making money I'm on tier four right now and something that sells for like eight copper at a vendor is being sold on the trading post for like 80 copper you make a ton of money mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is learn what salvaging um, uh, will give you because there are some things that you're going to need for your uh, for your professions. Like for example, if you're a woodworker, you're going to need wood. But if you have something that you know that, <laughs> thank you, you know Captain some, Obvious. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that if if you have if you have some items that you know are going to give you iron ore. Just sell them. Don't salvage them. Just sell them on the on the auction house. Because I made that mistake up until like level thirty ish. Yeah. Oh, another interesting thing I found that actually makes a lot of money, which is kind of weird. Um, unidentified dyes. Oh yes. And the um, the the bags of stuff that drop from mobs that you double click really? and it opens up. If you just sell the bag without opening it, they actually go for. A lot because people out. are betting on 
there being good stuff in there. It's like a lottery. Like just like the unidentified die, they're betting huh. that there's going to be a good die and not a crappy die in there. You know, they're betting that that unidentified die is going to reveal a celestial die and not, you know, copper pot die. Um, same deal with the, the bags of stuff. If you don't open them and just sell them, um, they go for like a couple silver. Wow. I had no idea because I had seen that the unidentified di- dies are used for, uh, for your gear, by the way. You can dye your gear. It's great. Um, I had seen that they were going on the uh, trading post for about six and a half silver. Yeah. But yeah. I did not know about the bags of stuff. I mean, the bags of stuff, I open them all because I get the crafting. That's how I get a lot of my crafting materials. Yeah, yeah, no, they have a lot of good stuff. Um, and sometimes they have crap. But like I said, you know, people are betting that they're going to have good stuff. So um, that's a good thing to sell. Yeah, there's a website. I'm going to bring it up right now. There's a website that I found. There are vistas and um, uh, what are they called? Uh, uh, points of interest in mm-hmm. the game. And... And they add to your XP. You get a lot of massive XP when you finish a zone. <clears throat> yeah, when and you clear all the, the hearts and vistas and uh, skill challenges yep. and POIs. There's a website called gw2.mmorpg-life.com. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long name, but they have very detailed information on how to clear a map. I had a clear nice. area. It's very, very nice. And uh, it, it helped me uh, when I was stuck a couple times. Because you don't know. Vi- some of the vistas are really hard to find. Find the starting point for it. Because sometimes they're up in a mountain. But the way the developers made the maps is that they're stepping stones. But you have to find where to start the stepping stones. That's mm-hmm. sometimes the hard part. I found one actually last ni- last night. Yeah. That was, um, it was Mushrooms. That oh. one I found on my own, but that's tough because because the vista is like fifty yards away. You don't know that the starting point are these yeah, little mushrooms yeah. and vines that are fifty yards over. It's almost always like a stair pattern. Mm-hmm. So anytime you see rocks in like a stair pattern or or mushrooms or you know whatever in kind of a stair pattern, you're like, okay, that's obviously meant to go somewhere. Um, but something that I run into, I've run into more than a couple times on clearing maps is there'll be like one POI Mm -hmm. or one waypoint that I can't seem to find anywhere and it's keeping me from clearing the map and I'm looking at it and, and I'll go to the Guild Wars wiki, which will almost always have the full, fully cleared map, you know, image on the wiki. So then I'll just compare and contrast, you know, my map to that map and and try and find, you know, the missing part. Yep. Which, in fact, we should say that the game does have a built-in wiki. I think it's slash wiki that brings oh, it up. in the game? Yeah. I believe... Does it can... bring up a browser window? I, I don't know. I've been seeing people mention that you can bring up the wiki in-game using slash wiki, huh. but I haven't tried it myself. I'll have to try that tonight. Yeah, I'll try it too. Um, you did a dungeon. I got frustrated because the whole aggro thing is just a clusterfuck. So <laughs> what so have we learned? Managing, <laughs> managing aggro, it can be done. And I, I read some um, posts on this after the fact. But I think the the core thing to take away from that is, and this is a lot of games have this, but the way you gear and spec out your character for soloing and leveling is going to be drastically different than what you need to gear and spec for in an instance. Mm-hmm. Um, and also more importantly, because there's no dedicated classes or roles rather in this game, there's no dedicated tank to mm-hmm. manage the aggro. There's no dedicated healer to save your butt. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody's pretty much on their own, but the, the key things are, um, block and CCing. If there's any classes, and there are classes, you know, who have a, a CC or a block, if, you know, a warrior or a guardian, you usually almost always have at least two, maybe three blocks mm-hmm. um, or blinds on your, on any weapon or skill set. You need to rotate those and use those to your advantage the most ever because most of the time the mobs are going to one shot you and then just bounce to the next guy, one shot him. Mm-hmm. You need to, you know, obviously 
you're not going to be able to really manage the aggro so much. So he might bounce around a lot, but you need to minimize taking hits. So blocking, dodging is going to be key. So if you have any gear or come across any gear that says, you know, um, plus to stability for knockbacks, uh, plus to dodges, plus to blocks, or, ha you know, have a weapon that gives you three blocks on your uh, skill bar instead of, say, you're using, you know, a two-handed greatsword for soloing because it does awesome damage, mm -hmm. but you have a short sword and a, and a shield that, you know, you don't really favor, that's going to be the better combo in the instance because you're going to be able to block and dodge sure, more great sure. sword you have no blocks and you're going to be screwed you're never going to out damage the mob so you're just going to have to wear them down very slowly using mm -hmm. a lot of blocks and dodges now you play a guardian which uses heavy armor i play an elementalist that uses light armor i have yet to figure out and i haven't googled it i haven't looked done any research on this at all but i haven't figured out how to survive as a light a light uh, armor wearer in, a, in an instance because I had uh, I had a mob come up to me and we're still trying to figure out how aggro itself works because we don't know how the mobs are moving from person to person. I've been reading that it has it, it has to do with three things. It has to do with the amount of damage that they're doing. It has to do with line of sight and it mm -hmm. has to do with distance away from the mob. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So if you're a caster, obviously you can keep a, a greater distance. Um, some, most casters need line of sight but some don't um engineer which isn't a caster um can throw like grenades over a wall mm -hmm. doesn't require li line of sight so that's uh kind of handy um but as a cloth wear or even a, a medium armor wear or even a, a heavy armor wear i'm trying to do this more myself um even you know wearing heavy I think also moving around a lot more, not staying in one place, not sitting there and turreting. Um, you need to keep moving. You need to, you know, I mean, you don't necessarily have room to kite or anything, mm -hmm. but moving around so that, you know, you're hoping that he'll, he'll have more chances to miss when trying to hit you. If you're moving around, even if you're just jumping in place, you know, move around more, mm -hmm. uh, move in a circle. So if you're just sitting there in one place, they're going to be hitting you every time. If sure. you're moving around, there's more chances that they might miss. You know, maybe it'll be, maybe it won't be every time. Maybe it'll only be every fourth swing, but obviously odds go up. Yeah. So. I've also found as an elementalist that I've had to switch to healing almost immediately. Uh, it's, it's prudent to, if you're playing an elementalist, get your um, your water spells high. Yes. Um, yeah. Now I don't know how this works with a scepter, but I've been using a staff, and you've got two uh, you've got two staff healing spells as a spell. Best for a staff. healing. Yeah. So you can't change. I don't think you can change your weapons uh, while you're fighting, and you can't change you can. your dynamic. You can't. If okay. you if you'd use the um, the like little switcher macro. Mm -hmm. um, and you have two slots, so you can have two weapons. You can't have more than that, but um, if those between those two slots, you can switch on the fly during a fight. Oh, all right. And I I've done that. Do I've that. done that many times. So, like, right. I'll have my offensive weapon, which is a two-handed greatsword, in one slot, and then in the the second set, I'll have um, what am I using now? Like a sword and focus um, as my defensive set. Mm. So if I'm you know, taking a lot of damage mid fight. And I'm thinking like, okay, I really underestimated this mob. I need to be <laughs> more conservative. I'll switch, you know, and start blocking a lot more. Yeah. Um, I went out with Lindy and my co-host from Warcast last night for football. And he asked me, should I, should I buy this game? And I said, well, let me wait until I get to end game because I don't want to make the same mistake I made with Ion and Terra where, the game looks pretty and awesome, and, and you play it for a couple of weeks, and then you get to a point where you go, oh, my God, this game really, really sucks. Well, I haven't I haven't gotten to that point yet in Guild Wars 2. I'm level 51. I have absolutely no idea what Endgame is like, but at this point, I, I just love it to death. I and think it's going to be far less likely that they're going to – that that's going to happen with this game because already at launch, this game launched with more content – 
and more stuff to do <laughs> than SWOTOR, than Terra, than all of those games. Yeah, combined you know, not, almost. Yeah, not only do you have like a very comprehensive, challenging, um, trade skilling, you know, set there, you have the full, you know, in depth PvP section. So people who dig PvP, you could just immerse yourself just in that alone, mm -hmm. you know, and be content. And and then there's the adventuring, um, you know, with a huge, huge world. There's so much content out there. I don't think, A, I don't think this game is going to get boring for a very long time. No, I don't think and so at all. I don't think Endgame is going to be like it was with Suotor or anything else. Because, mm -hmm. like I said, I mean, that PvP, um, you've got so many things to do. Mm -hmm. I think this game is going to be around for a long time. I think... Just as word of mouth hurt Old Republic, I think word of mouth is actually going to help Guild Wars 2. And yeah. It does. It, it didn't have like nearly the hype in the beginning, but it's really catching on like wildfire. Mm -hmm. I, I believe so. So I think we talked a lot <laughs> about Guild Wars 2. It was very difficult. We were talking about this last night. We're like, well, what do we do? We're not going to do our own show. Because we don't have the time. But, so it's just going to happen here, folks. I'm it's sorry. Just gonna it's just going to come out and whatever. Actually, tell us, email us, um, the next kind of gmail.com. Let us know if you want us to keep talking about Guild Wars 2. Either keep it where it is, maybe put it towards the bottom of the show. I don't know. Uh, but let oh, us know. Oh, that might be an idea. So then people can just cut out. Yeah. Just stop listening at one point. And those who want to keep listening, then it's all Guild Wars y goodness. <laughs> EA, we love Duh. EA, don't we? Uh, Aren't they like the best game developer, company, distributor, publisher ever? Mm. Right. So <laughs> it turns out that, and I'm going to probably butcher this guy's last name, Frank Gibeau, G-I-B-E-A-U, the president of EA <laughs> Labels, is saying that they are not going to greenlight any more single player games. Sorry, Neverwinter Nights. I think that this is unfortunate because a game can stand alone on its own as a very solid single-player game. I'll give you an example. I think that the uh, the multiplayer in Mass Effect 3 was atrocious and yes. unnecessary. Well, yeah, Mass Effect, Borderlands, Neverwinter Nights, Skyrim, Elder, all Elder Scroll games. Um there's there's so many just single player games. I mean that's like you're just you're cutting out more than fifty percent of games. Oh sure. When you say that. Sure. I mean, look, guys, uh, if you want to make a, a good multiplayer game and have the EA, na EA name slapped onto it, then create a good one. Don't just slap on multiplayer because you know what it is. They want those people to. Um, here's what they want to do. They have I don't know exactly what the name of it is, but you know they have those codes in the games now where you have to put in your code and you can't resell the game. And and so the next person who owns DRM? The game, no, it's OEM? not DRM. It's not DRM. It's when I played um when I bought Mass Effect 2, I got a code in the box. And what that does is that I have to put the code into Xbox Live and then it it, uh, it, so it, then it associates you can't play that it game on... with me. Yeah. And so if I go to GameStop and I say I want to sell the game, they'll they'll take the game and they'll sell it to but somebody it else. Work. But that yeah, that second person. Or if won't. your Xbox dies because they're terribly reliable, <laughs> your game's not going to work on the replacement Xbox. Right. So they're doing this for look. I understand that people are going to make money. I get it. We're in a capitalist society. I'm all for it, but I don't like the way they're doing it. Yeah. If, right. It's 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 hurting. First off, it's hurting themselves. I think, and I think it's hurting the industry because there are some damn good first player game, uh, um, uh, so single player games out there that are going to have multiplayer slapped on it, and you don't know if they're going to be good. And it's also going to delay the games. Because, yeah, yeah multiplayer games just don't grow on trees. What? No, no you got to write the code and, and put all the, 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 the rules and the physics. and the, the yeah. stuff. Is Arena just... Net's finding that out, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i got to cut them a little slack, though. I mean... No, they're doing a good job. They have nightly builds. I mean, they're on their shit. Yeah, they they are. But um, EA, I don't know. They're, they're... 
They when I not. was growing up, EA was the big company on I mean, the Atari mm-hmm. and the Commodore, and and yeah. they have grown so so much, and they're starting to fall in my now opinion. Now they're grown out of touch, I think. Yeah, but here, oh, this next one, I saw Best. this today, and I almost jumped because I was so happy. SOE isn't like the biggest developer or the biggest game manufacturer, but God damn it, if they don't. You know, if they're not just committed and they have probably the most loyal fan base ever yep. for, you know, EQ2 in particular, really. Um, and probably EQ1, but, you know, those those titles just have a loyal fan base. And SOE just is awesome at catering to those fans. Mm-hmm. Sony Online Entertainment announced today that they're going to give people the tools they need to create their own in-game items. How freaking cool is that? So It's amazing. They're going to give you base geometry. So I, I guess they don't want people making their own like flying poo or something like that. But they're going to give you base geometry. Fine, and I then you can create it. your own items in-game. And then you can sell them on the auction house. This is like... Well, it's a little bit like... Um, what is it? That blueprints... Uh, edition of uh, City of Heroes where you could mm-hmm. make your own dungeons. It's a little bit like Second Life where you could make your own stuff and it's yes. a little bit like um, well the old uh, old version of The Sims for PC where you could make your own stuff. Mm-hmm. But I think that was more of a hack. It wasn't really official. <laughs> but but this is fantastic. And And again, like anybody who is loyal and loves EQ2 is probably just screaming in delight right now. Yeah. Um it's like it's like being a carpenter in real life. Well, I was a carpenter in EQ2 and I loved making different yeah. things. And Me too. That that was my main trade skill and my favorite and was I it loved yours? it. I could Yes. I didn't know that. I, I it was got mine to too. Max, max level carpentry and it was my favorite and I could just spend hours making stuff and decorating my houses, but you know, I'm a girl, so whatever. <laughs> and I'm not, but I still love making stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is fantastic. This is just like a whole nother fantastical layer of frosting on top of being a carpenter, yep. you know, because I think especially carpenters are probably especially excited about this. <laughs> and you said to me today, there's not enough time for all this cool stuff. I know, with the Guild Wars and now this, <laughs> and, and wow, I and... do not have enough time in my life. I need to find a way to not sleep ever again. I am going to try this uh, this SOE thing, I, uh, the EverQuest 2 thing. I got to try it. I have mm-hmm. to make... I'm going to try making something. I'm going to maybe try making... Um, I'm gonna try maybe with chairs, desks. Ooh, ooh! I can make an Apple Store in my house. <gasps> you could make that dude's the, the mini desk. Apple Store home office. There you go. I can make. Oh. I'm gonna. I don't know what kind of geometry they give you because I haven't downloaded the thing yet. But there's a guy who we talked about some infinite loop last night. Is that there's a guy who who created an Apple Store in his house, in his, his home office. In his home office. And so, how it's- cool would it be to have like a room in your in your uh in your house in Kinos, South Kinos, and then you can make like a little Apple store. <laughs> You're giggling like a schoolgirl. I now totally you make little iMacs and iPads and <laughs> that's nice. So I'll let everybody know about that. The Xbox seven twenty or whatever they're gonna call it is gonna be delayed. Is this oh, well. a big surprise? They're always delayed. Yeah. Um, I don't care. I'm not a big Xbox <laughs> user, but um, I don't know. I mean, I guess this is better than rushing, you know, a subpar product to market. Yeah. Well, I'm. I know that there are some people out there that get really impatient, but I'm of the logic, like uh, like Blizzard, it'll be done when it's done. I'd rather yeah. have it done right the first time, especially when you're dealing with hardware. You want to make sure that yeah. it's done right the first time because we don't want any more of these. Uh, Red, Red rings, rings of Death mm. um, that plagued, plagued the original Xboxes. but um, So now it's looking like they're going to be out in September 2013, which is fine. Well, that's uh, not much later than you know we were already thinking, maybe a couple months, but oh well. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be first online. Uh, it depends on what the launch titles are going to be. 
And speaking of launch titles, I'm going to skip ahead just a little bit for a segue, but uh, there's uh, there's a, not an announcement, but there's speculation that the new Zelda is not going to be on the Wii U until 2014. This makes sense because when you're rolling out a new console, you want to make mm-hmm. sure that it's in people's hands. You don't want to put out a new Zelda title or a new Halo title and then, oh, er, sorry, uh, n- don't have enough consoles for everyone. So you wait a little bit. Yeah, that would be... Um, well, I mean, they've they've done that before. And Nintendo, I, I kind of feel like, is does more of this where, you know, they don't make enough Mm -hmm. um you know so they they (laughs) demand is is much higher and and people are waiting outside of fries and target at five in the morning you know three weeks six weeks later Mm -hmm. to get like a wee because you know uh it's still so constrained yep um I was so, with, what? again, you know, it'll be ready when it's ready. I was with my family in New York one day. I forgot what we were there for. It was in the winter. And we were driving by Toys R Us on the way home. And there's a line. It wasn't a long line, but there was a line. And I knew what that line was for. And yeah. so I said to my wife, I said, mm, let me see how long the wait is. Because this has got to be for the wait. Sure mm-hmm. enough, I get online I and I asked the guy there, I said, this is for the Wii? They said, yes. How long of a wait? 20 minutes. And this was not too soon, or I'm sorry, uh, um, not too long after the, the original launch. So I I waited 20 minutes and I got a Wii and that's how, uh, that's how I got my Yeah, uh, I Wii. remember, yeah, for quite a few months later. Um, and it, the longer it got out there, you know, it was like, not every day, but every week when they were when the stores were getting shipments, people knew, and there was a line, <laughs> you know, that night for the shipment. Sure. And it was like that was just the longest, I don't know, extended launch, you know, just to get the consoles in people's hands. And they kind of had that with the um, the Wii Fit. I remember, you know, standing in line outside of Fry's to get a, a Wii Fit. Mm-hmm. Um, so they kind of had that too, but. I feel like Nintendo products have that more than anything else. I mean, obviously excluding Apple products, mm-hmm. but in in the gaming sphere, that that happens to Nintendo products far more. But everybody seems to have plenty of Xboxes and, well, <laughs> kind of a lot of PS3s. But there are some people in the world that are still using Windows XP for gaming. What? Yes. <laughs> idiots i don't blame them look i gotta say look i'm a, i'm an apple fan you and i do a show and all that but uh, windows xp is is like the the solid workhorse of, uh, of the windows world and i guess i guess you gotta play your penguin games on something right <laughs> penguin games i gotta say that i i have i did not really expect windows xp to last as long as it's been it's been what 11 years now well, I think a lot of people don't have a lot of choices. You know, Vista sucked, and and then Seven is pretty stable. But if you if this is like your work computer, a lot of enterprises still have a lot of XP machines. Mm-hmm. Um, and Windows Eight is looking stellar. Um, <laughs> so, you know, until support is officially ended and people are, you know, literally pushed out of the bar and to- told to go home. Um, they're gonna rock their XP machines until yep. they literally die. Call of Duty Two uh, Black Ops is going to support DirectX Eleven, which means Adios Windows XP support. And oh, you can't play Call of Duty on Windows XP. <laughs> I know there are some games that still use DirectX Nine, like World of Warcraft has DirectX Nine support still. Uh, I don't know why people would not update to Windows Seven by now. I guess maybe especially if you're a gamer, like this doesn't make much sense. I think these are the the casual gamers. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, but with Windows 8 being so cheap, I can't see why it's anybody true. wouldn't update. Unless their it's... hardware just doesn't isn't up to spec. But, you know, if Windows 8... Well, I know it's not the same Windows 8 that they're running on tablets, but there's going to be some tablets that are going to run Windows 8 Pro, so... Yep. I don't know. Absolutely. Um, but uh, speaking of the Wii U... GameStop is apparently removing all their PS2 stock to make room for the Wii U. Interesting. Uh, PS2 still selling. They still sell new ones. 
<laughs> yeah, much like, you know, Windows XP, but yeah. uh, sadly, PS2s can still play games legitimately, <laughs> uh, unlike Windows XP. But, you know, they're probably just as old and still rocking it. Mm-hmm. There is going to be a Final Fantasy thirteen Part 3 uh, <laughs> with lightning. You laugh, Let's but... Move on to, like, fourteen, fifteen. why they got <laughs> you know, Part 3 is Part 4. Well, it's a very unprecedented for well. First off, Final Fantasy uh, never had a sequel until ten. Then there was ten two, and now there's thirteen, and then there was thirteen two, and now there's going to be a thirteen three. But then there's a rumor going around that it may turn into Final Fantasy fifteen, which I don't think it would happen could. because Final Fantasy's own rules is that every major number does not relate to any other major numbers worlds. So oh, I see. Okay, so that, that that's why they're not moving on because they just want to play more in this world. They don't want to turn it into something else. I don't understand. Well, if they're going to do anything, I would think they would keep. If Lightning is still going to be the Lightning from Final Fantasy Thirteen is is going to be the major uh, character in the story. So I don't see why they would move it to fifteen, except maybe to just make people think that they're moving on. Oh, no, really you're not. Right. I mean that that makes total sense. I forgot that each iteration was completely different kind of like elder scrolls Mm -hmm. so if they were going to make it in the same world then it makes sense that it would be part of you know the original number and not 15 yeah so if they make this 15 i have a feeling that they're probably working on 16 or whatever's going to be next but whatever they do next has got to be pretty damn awesome because final fantasy 3 i personally like 13 not as much as other games but um I have to say that they really got to step it up and make dynamic worlds like, which is what Final Fantasy is known for. The linear, mm-hmm. th- the linear part of thirteen I didn't like. The story was good, the acting was good. Uh, I just really didn't like the, the, the linearity and, and it made it feel wrong for a Final Fantasy game. <laughs> so, and they said the reason why that they don't make them as dynamic as they used to is because it takes too long, because everything is in HD now. To which I think, well, wait a minute. I mean, if this is the way I see it, maybe I'm completely wrong about this whole thing, but the tools that made Final Fantasy VII in 1996, 1990, it came out in 97. So the tools for the PS1, are, do they, are they scaled in the sense that you can, I guess maybe it's the detail that they have to work on. Because look at all the detail in, in um, Guild Wars. I'm talking about like, no, like I, architecture and things like that. Like they have to be much more meticulous. About yeah, what they I'd build. imagine they're probably not using the same tools. No? Oh no, 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 no! I'm not saying they're using the same tools. I'm just saying that the the scaling of of what they used oh. back then does it, it are are they as well, I don't complex? Think it probably doesn't scale like two times or three times. It's probably scaling exponentially. Yeah, because I'm thinking, well, you still had to take a texture and put it on an object. Yeah, because my that background's in be, like you said, higher res, much more detailed. You know, you can't just kind of cut corners and be like, "Oh, nobody's going to see it anyways." It's whatever resolution. Yeah, I suppose. And last, what do we got? Marvel Heroes MMO beta registration starts today. So sign up, kids. You can go over to marvelheroes.com um, and sign up. It's right there on the front page. Put your uh, email in, and they will let you know if you've been picked for the beta. The beta actually starts on October 1st. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I'm still pretty excited about this game because I'm a big Marvel guru. And um, (laughs) yeah, so um, if you're excited about that game too, or if you just want to know more about it, again, marvelheroes.com. All right, did you uh, sign up? I assume you did. I did. Okay. All right, what's our geek of the week? I say arena net. <laughs> this is probably going to be controversial because I think everybody who's playing Guild Wars 2 right now is pretty divided right down the middle with whether they absolutely hate and curse arena net or applaud and are appreciative of their efforts. Mm-hmm. Um, I am of the camp that applauds and appreciates their effort because I know that they're actually doing stuff. Like I said, they're having nightly builds every night around midnight. There's at least one, if not two or three new builds that are pushed out. Um, we've seen, even though the trading post has been down most mm-hmm. of the time, we've seen it come up and go down and come up and go down. 
We know that they're working on it. They're patching and fixing holes. You know, maybe their customer service doesn't get to you as, as soon as you'd like. They're a little busy. They've been working on the game for seven years. I've cut them a little slack. Um, dealing with this kind of game is not easy. Yeah. And they'll uh-huh. get it all worked out. No, they're pushing out, like I said before, they're pushing out a ton of content at launch. Like, they're probably pushing out more content than most games have at launch. Mm-hmm. Um you know, most games they'll they'll push out whatever they do, and then they have expansions or updates and and push out more. They're trying to push it all out at launch. That's going yeah. to take a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, and a little bit of patience on the user base's part. Sure, absolutely. So yes, I applaud them and keep doing whatever it is you're doing, and I will <laughs> keep playing this wonderful game. <laughs> all right, I think we're done. That was a long show. It was a good long show. There's a lot to talk about. Yeah. So why don't you tell everybody how they can get a hold of us? All right. We are the Nexicon at gmail.com. Email us corrections, comments, concerns, um, whether you'd like us to, like Mike said, keep Guild Wars talk to a minimum or explode it out if you love it, if you hate it, whatever. Um, we're the Nexicon on Google Plus, on Facebook, the Nexicon on the Twitters. I am at Casey Queso on Twitter. This guy is what? I'm at Star Mike. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, iTunes. We're all over the place. So, um, oh, and the Nexicon.com, or is it Nexicon? Yeah, the, the Nexicon.com, and that is where I'm going to take all our shows and I'm consolidating them all into there. So, at some point, maybe within the next week or so, I'm going to have a master feed for all the podcasts, uh, like Warcast, This Week in Trek, and, and all those. And um, you can subscribe to the individual ones as well. So More nerdy than you can handle, people. That's right. All right. Thanks. All right. Until next week. Bye. Bye.